Welcome back to Baking School with Jamie. A few years ago, all baking was a mystery to me. Yeast, flour, baking soda, baking powder. I had no idea how it all worked together or that there was different categories of bread. And as I started grinding my own grains, I suddenly realized I could make really healthy and protein packed baked goodies for my family that were actually delicious. I had never invested much time in learning how to bake amazing muffins or perfect pancakes from scratch because I didn't really see how they could fit into my weekly cooking and meal planning outside of, you know, kind of an occasional treat. So I just never really, I don't know that I'd really hardly ever made muffins, maybe once or twice. No matter if you make whole grain quick breads or white flour ones, there's nothing like learning how easy it is to make quick breads. And that is what we're diving into today. Quick breads are incredible because they're exactly what you think. They're quick. There's no kneading, there's no rise time, there's no second rise, there's no finicky yeast or sourdough to deal with. You plop the recipes into a bowl, you mix and you bake. Now, some recipes are a bit more involved like scones, you gotta shape them a little, they're still easy though. Once you master quick breads, you'll have already gained so many great skills that you can put towards mastering a yeast sandwich loaf or sourdough, whatever your next step is that you really want to dive into. Okay, so a quick bread is a bread or a treat that is leavened with baking powder, baking soda, or eggs instead of yeast or sourdough. And then it's baked immediately without rising time. Quick breads are simple and easy for the beginning baker, or they're amazing for even an advanced baker to put more into their weekly meal plan and routine. Okay, let's dive in. Here in lesson number three, we're gonna do an overview of, of what quick breads are, and then I will have a great recipe to share with you at the end. Now, head back over to lesson number one to learn all about the equipment and tools you need for baking, and lesson number two covers the different types of flours. Make sure you've got those down, they're very helpful. And as a reminder before we get into it, you can head over to Baking School with Jamie dot com to access the printables and the recipes for free that go along with every single lesson. Every lesson we come up with a fantastic simple recipe for you to do right alongside me. So watch till the end of this lesson because today we are learning how to make really easy buttermilk biscuits. Biscuits are amazing. You never need to buy Bisquick again. You are going to learn how to make them. And then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another episode of Baking School with Jamie. All right, Quick Breads 101. Here are some fantastic tips for you for Quick Breads. Number one tip, do not over mix. When you're making yeast breads, when you've added yeast, you're going to need the dough. You're going to need the dough a lot. The more you need it, the more it allows the gluten protein to develop, and that's what gives you the stiff structure you need for yeast breads. You want to really beat that dough up because it's going to give you a better yeast bread. Quick breads, though, are the opposite. You are going to emphasize the quick part because, in fact, you do not want to overmix. With quick breads, you'll want to mix the batter or the dough just until those ingredients come together and then stop Overmixing is gonna to lead to further gluten development and we want it to stay soft and pliable, okay? So this will allow you to have a more moist, tender crumb and this is what allows your muffins, for example, to be springy and crumbly. Overmixing is gonna lead them to be more dense and just not have that same crumb or texture that we want from most quick breads. Tip number two is to keep your ingredients fresh. We're gonna dive into different types of leaveners in quick breads down below, but one important point is to make sure your leaveners are fresh, okay? So what I'm talking about is you don't want 10-year-old baking soda and baking powder to try and bake with. To check if your baking soda is still fresh, mix one teaspoon of baking soda with one tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar. If it's fresh still, it'll react immediately and it's gonna get all bubbly. If it doesn't fizz and bubble, it's time to get new baking soda. So if you're looking at your fridge and you're thinking, I have no idea how long it's been in here, test it out. For baking powder, you can test it by mixing one teaspoon of baking powder with a fourth cup of hot water. It should bubble up a ton, if not, replace it. 
And I will have these notes for you at bakingschoolwithjamie.com for lesson number three, so you don't have to write all that down. Okay, baking soda. Let's talk about the specifics of what this does in your quick breads. So when baking soda is used on its own as a leavener, you wanna make sure to get your quick bread into the oven as fast as possible as the leavening power, which is what helps it rise, starts to fade almost immediately. Now don't rush, don't get stressed, but just don't let it sit on, on the counter for 30 minutes before baking. You wanna make it and put it right in the oven. Baking soda is an alkaline leavener and it reacts with acidic ingredients such as buttermilk, molasses, or even cocoa powder. So in a recipe, you'll notice that in baking soda, you always use a much smaller amount of baking soda than you do of baking powder. And if you ever accidentally switch them up and use baking soda instead of baking powder, your quick bread will be way too sour to eat. Just ask me how I know because I have done that. I ruined an entire batch of waffles by swapping those two. So with baking soda, there are two distinctions to look for. And so the most common brand, of course, is like Arm & Hammer. They create their baking soda from a chemical process. So it's created in like a factory or a lab or something. Other brands like Azure or Bob's Red Mill, they use a natural baking soda from the ground in its natural state. And this is what I choose to buy now. But I used Arm & Hammer for years. I will buy it in a pinch if I need it. So don't let that stress you out. But I do choose to reach for the more natural version, which tends to have a better rise as well. Now, baking powder. Baking powder is what we will use more often in quick breads as it's a complete leavener in itself. It's made up of baking soda, plus cream of tartar. And in fact, in a pinch, if you run out of baking powder, which this always happens to me, you can easily make your own baking powder by combining two parts of cream of tartar with one part of baking soda. So you'd use two tablespoons of cream of tartar plus one tablespoon of baking soda, mix them together, you have your own baking powder. Now, you'll want to get double acting baking powder, which means it activates first with a liquid, and then again, it activates when you're baking, so you get a better rise. And it's the more, it's by far the more common baking powder you'll see out there. I don't know that if I've ever, I've ever seen single acting baking powder on the store shelf, but if you're having trouble with your baking powder, just make sure that it's the double acting kind, because that's what any recipe I've ever seen is calling for. Okay, now with baking powder, when you go to buy it, you do have to be aware of one thing. Many cheaper or store brand baking powders have added aluminum in them. You don't want this, you don't want your family ingesting it, and it's not needed. It doesn't make a better baking powder. I think it's probably cheaper to produce. So 10 years ago when I started cooking, doing my own healthy cooking, I could only find aluminum-free baking powder at Trader Joe's. It was the only one, and now most brands are aluminum-free. So if it doesn't say it on the front, aluminum free, just turn it around, look at the ingredients, and you'll see some form of aluminum listed. It'll say some form of that, or it's not listed. So you just wanna make sure you're buying one that doesn't have aluminum in it. Buttermilk, buttermilk is one that is often used in quick breads. It is highly acidic, and it reacts very well with the baking soda to create those bubbles and that leavening agent. I didn't actually realize for a long time that's what the buttermilk was doing. So if you used regular milk instead, if you substituted it, you would end up with a much more sour end product since there's nothing for the baking soda to interact with. So if you don't have baking, uh, if you don't have buttermilk on hand, which I often do not, you can easily make your own faux buttermilk. Just take one cup of milk and mix in one tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice, and then let it sit for a few minutes before using. And this gives you the perfect acidic balance then. I do this all the time because I just rarely have buttermilk on hand. Okay, let's talk about adapting recipes. So quick breads are fun because you get to play around with them. You get to add things in, make them your own. Uh, scones and biscuits, you can make sweet or savory ones. Uh, you can get your, a good hand at making either, and you can make all kinds. The same goes for muffins and loaf breads. In fact, muffins and loaf breads are so similar to each other in their batter that you can usually change one into the other. So let's say you have a recipe for muffins that makes one dozen normal size muffins. Uh, that same batter from one dozen muffins will fit neatly into a nine by five pan or an eight and a half by four and a half inch pan and vice versa. So maybe you've got a pumpkin loaf that you love, turn it into pumpkin muffins instead by just plopping them in the tins. Uh, if you've got blueberry muffins you love, try to make a blueberry loaf. Now your loaf will require much longer cooking time because of how dense it is to get there in the middle. So loaves usually take 
40 to 60 minutes, whereas your muffins generally are only gonna take 15 to 25 minutes. But I love that you have that versatility of going back and forth and they just, they feel different for some reason, even though it's the exact same batter. All right, a question I always get asked is storing quick breads. I do a ton of quick bread breaking throughout my week. In fact, this is most of what we eat for snacks around here. I tend to do a good four hour baking session once a week where I bulk bake a bunch of stuff for the week ahead. In lesson 10, you can join me to see what I actually do, how I do that. You're, you're just gonna come along with me for that baking and we'll cut it down so you don't have to watch four hours. Now, here's some tips though for storing and thankfully quick breads are very easy to store. So for most quick breads, you'll want to leave them in their pan for about seven to 10 minutes after you're baking. So you got those blueberry muffins that come out, let them sit for about 10 minutes. This allows it to start sweating and it's gonna be a lot easier to remove from the pan, like so much easier. Then you wanna transfer to the counter or a cooling rack to cool completely. Unless of course you just made like fresh banana bread and you wanna slice it and lather some butter on it on those hot pieces right away. Loaf breads are eaten immediately in this house because they just have to be hot out of the oven with butter on them. <laughs> Other than that, let your quick breads cool completely and the quick breads are typically gonna go bad and mold faster if left at room temperature because of they're so much more moist as opposed to a yeast bread. So I store all of my quick breads just personally in the refrigerator um, if we're gonna eat them within a week. I'll put them in the refrigerator or you can freeze them really easily uh, for longer storage and you can freeze most quick breads for up to three months. So if you wanna make two dozen at once, you could stick one dozen in the freezer for later. Now, for loaf breads, if I'm gonna store them in the fridge for later, I usually just leave them in the pan. Okay, I got my pans right here. I usually just leave it in the pan and I cover my loaf bread with plastic wrap or what I usually use is beeswax wrap and just stick it in the fridge like this because it's easy and convenient. For muffins, I let them cool completely on the counter and then either store them like in a large, I have this big old Tupperware, I have a glass like Pyrex dish that's got a lid on it or gallon Ziploc bags and just stick them in the, in the, in the fridge or the freezer. All right, now stick around for a few more minutes while we make easy buttermilk biscuits. I know you've been waiting for this. And then head over to bakingschoolwithjamie.com to download the printable sheet from today's lesson and to download the recipes for this recipe for free. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you never miss a future episode of Baking School with Jamie. Okay, now let's get started on our biscuits. So today we're making really simple biscuits. These are so simple, but so delicious. I'm gonna make two different batches. So the first one is I'm gonna make uh, freshly ground spelt, which you can see right here, muffins, I'm sorry, biscuits. And I'm also gonna do a white flour batch of biscuits. Okay, so biscuits, the secret to really, really good biscuits is very cold butter. In fact, you can even freeze the butter. Uh, it's going to work even better. But if you just have really, really cold butter, you want your hands to touch it as little as possible because it will warm it up. So I cut it into these little, dice it into these little pieces. And then I'm going to take my pastry cutter, which you can use a knife or forks or whatever, but a pastry cutter works really well. You can go in for like seven bucks. And you're going to cut it up until they're little tiny pieces of the butter there, you wanna keep it as cold as possible. In fact, after you do this, you can put it back in the fridge for a couple of minutes if you want to. But our goal is to cut it up into those little pieces, put our buttermilk in, and we're really just mixing up the batter. These, these are actually really simple. People get afraid of making biscuits, but as long as you've got that cold butter, you're doing pretty good. So we're gonna put it out on a floured surface and handle it as little as possible. I did shape it a little bit with my hands, but you wanna make sure it stays cold. Use a rolling pin, you can even use a cold rolling pin. And then we're gonna use my little biscuit cutters here and we're gonna cut out our biscuits. So we're going to re-roll this out a couple of times. Again, try to handle it as little as possible and you're going to get your six or so biscuits and then you, you can see my spelt ones there on the right and then the white flour ones on the left. We're going to raise them with that baking powder and the butter to get them all big and fluffy. Uh, you want to cut them thicker because they do only raise about half to a quarter up. They're not going to raise as much as you probably think that they're going to but we have got some absolutely delicious biscuits then and the spelt don't raise as much but they both are still so so delicious. <laughs> 